Let's see, um, so what are we doing? Uh, uh, you see, when you have a small number of discrete choices, uh, then uh, we use this voting algorithm to all aggregate the uh, votes in an optimal way. But now we want to do the same with continuous data. So for example, market analysts, uh, <coughs> they can do two types of things. Uh, they can ruin your money, that's one thing. Um, but uh, um, they can either give recommendations in the, uh, strong sell, sell, hold, buy, and strong buy. So far, only five uh, options, right? So a small number of discrete choices and to aggregate their votes, we could use uh, the voting algorithm. And someone asked me for a uh, voting algorithm with the distances. Uh, I have the paper now. Uh, if you, if you uh, send me an email, I'll bounce it to you. Or I can put it on the web. Um, so, um, but the, they can also try to predict, to estimate the stock price, right? And stock price is not a small number of discrete options. It can be any value, right, from, I don't know, uh, 10 cents a share uh, for junk stock all the way to this astronomical valuation of uh, Amazon, right? So we need something that is also capable to aggregate this type of data, inconsistent data, in an optimal way, right? Um, so <clears throat> we saw that uh, one logical way of doing it would be the following. Um, so you have a, a sin a sensor. So let me use exactly the same notation, even though it's a little bit cumbersome. So we have readings. So we can think of uh, uh, the setup in which we are uh, we have a certain number of sensors, and then we are receiving, they are measuring the same environmental quantity, and we want to aggregate it. So, uh, the, the day readings uh, look like this. This is at, in, uh, at sensor I at time instant uh, T, right? And you have uh, um, in this notation on uh, and, and mathematical reserves of capital letters very often. So to stay here of the, of the trouble, you use at least two letters for the variable name. So mn is equal to 25. That's number of sensors. And in this case, uh, 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 taking measurements, over, uh, I think it was, uh, what was it, uh, 288 instants. Uh, this is every five minutes during daytime. Uh, right, and you want to aggregate optimally this uh, sensor readings. And the idea is very simple, you start uh, uh, we estimate, uh, right, uh, at initial estimate, let's denote it like this, at an at instant uh, t to be simply the mean. So this will be just sum i equals from 1 to nn readings of i sensor at instant t <coughs> divided by nn. So this is just simple mean. Right, and we know when we have outliers, this is pretty bad estimate, right? In fact, when you need something very simple, what do we prefer to use instead of the mean? What is more robust? for 
if you have a few really bad outliers and you don't Medium. want to skew, what do we use? Uh? Medium. Medium, exactly. Five number theory. Sorry? Five number theory. Five? Five number theory. What is five number theory? The minimum, maximum, and uh, the fourth, like the mean. Ah, the one. yeah. Yeah, okay, so there are kind of, but this is kind of, you see, so you can decide what is, what are the outliers. Uh, maybe you decide one-fifth of them on top are, of, of maximal readings, are, of largest readings are outliers, and also one-fifth of, say, the bottom readings, and then you take uh, the median um, um, or mean uh, if you uh, remove the outliers. Anyhow, but these are simplistic ways. Uh, the whole point of this algorithm is that it doesn't rule out anyone. Uh, it doesn't kind of uh, remove the outliers, but it just tries to aggregate all of them with the idea being what was behind maximum likelihood estimation. You remember, in maximum likelihood estimation, uh, you don't throw away uh, readings from a lousy sensors, you just weigh their readings uh, with the reciprocal of their variances, right? So we want to, of course, here, uh, we assume that we don't have these uh, uh, variances, right? So uh, if we knew uh, variances of sensors, uh, Then I'll say variance is uh, VI of sensors. Then the following sum, uh, one over uh, variance of sensor I divided by the sum of reciprocals of all variances of all sensors, J equals from 1 to NN. And then I goes from 1 to n n. And then here are readings of the height sensor at t, right? So this, uh, uh, let's call it here, s uh, of t, right? Estimation of t. This would be optimal. Uh, and uh, this estimator has minimal possible variance. So if you knew the variances, you simply take reciprocals of the variances, you normalize them because for something to be a mean, all the weights must add up to one, right? So, but in practice, we don't have these variances. So we want to somehow, in parallel, uh, refine the estimators and refine the, uh, 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 the estimations of the variances. So initial estimate, we take simply the mean, and then uh, variance, uh, uh, I think I called it var here, of uh, at zero stage of iteration, simply you can take it uh, to be uh, one over the number of instances, which I denoted dt minus 1, if you want to be to kind of uh, uh, optimally estimate, and then uh, t equals from 1 to um, t, uh, t, and then here you will have uh, readings. Uh, and that's variance of the i sensor, readings of the i sensor at instant t minus zero estimate, right? Which is just the mean and then squared, right? So if this estimate was a true value, then we know this is a, an unbiased estimator of the variance. But we don't know what the estimate, what the true value is. So we take simple mean 
as the initial estimation. We compute this approximate variance, and now we can improve our estimate and get estimate at the uh, first round of iteration uh, to be sum of <coughs> 1 over the variance of i over of, uh, uh, of order uh, 0. And then here are sum of variance obtained in the previous round of sensor j. And then you sum up over all sensors. So, so here it will be uh, s of t. And then this will be i goes from 1 to n n. And then here readings uh, of i sensor at instant t. Right? So you start with a rough estimation of the true quantity. Then you use this rough estimation of true quantity to roughly estimate the variance of i sensor. And then you simulate maximum likelihood estimation, right? This optimal one, except that uh, rather than having true variances, you use previously obtained estimation of the variance. And now you can also get variance uh, 1 to be precisely like this. Now, whether you put 1 over t minus 1 or tt, you see, because this is optimal estimation of variance only when this is the mean. But now it's no longer the mean, so we can keep 1 over tt. It doesn't make a difference because tt is usually large, so approximately you get the same t equals to 1 to tt. And then here you have, a, um, ah, I call it s, let me call it estimation. Estimator. Right? And then here you have uh, readings of sensor i at instant t minus estimate uh, estimate uh, 1 of uh, t and then the whole thing squared. And you keep doing that. Uh, right? So First, you make a rough initial estimate of the mean, right? Of the true, uh, you use mean as a rough <coughs> estimator of the true quantity. Then you use this uh, estimation of true quantity to approximate the variances uh, of the sensors. Then you do quote-unquote kind of pseudo-maximum likelihood. Why? Because this is not true variances. These are um, previously obtained approximations of the variances. You get new estimate. Now you can get a better estimation of the variance because uh, um, this estimate is hopefully more accurate than that, uh, that, that estimate. And also, what is the idea? If a sensor is far away from the mean, it's most likely an outlier. So it will have a large variance. And so its readings will get small weight. Right? Are you with me? Do you understand? This is really simple and important and very effective in practice. So idea is to simultaneously, since we don't have variances and we don't know the true value, we recursively keep estimating both the variances and as the true and the true values uh, in this iterative procedure. Once I get variance one, I can have uh, estimation uh, estimation two with variance one here. Once I get estimation two, I can get variance three by replacing it here, right? And uh, we spin this uh, until uh, the process has converged, hopefully, right? 
So let's see how well this performs in practice. So, um, so you see here, um, here I have, uh, oh, this is, uh, how is this? Let me just see. My goodness, I keep, my, oh, this is not the right file, sorry. Let me see. One is this one. Uh, don't save. Ah, this is the one. So uh, let me see. Uh, how do I uh, view, view? Where is it? How do I get full screen mode here? Um, it should be. Ah, full screen. Here it is. Okay, uh, so it was introduced by uh, a bunch of people uh, that, uh, uh, that, that are actually physicists. Uh, and it was published uh, in uh, uh, physics uh, review letters, I believe. Uh, so uh, let's see what we got here. So we have 25 sensors making 288 readings. And we kind of model the temperature by this uh, kind of piece of sine wave, right? Because uh, here you go, in, at midnight is the coldest, then the temperature rises, and then drops again to minimal value. So let us uh, evaluate this. And then what we do is the following. We will consider two cases. First case is uh, all the variances will be chosen randomly so the sensors uh, will have uh, random variances between 1 and 5. Uh, uh, later we will see uh, another, uh, uh, another setup with different variances. So you can see the choices uh, uh, right, of, the, of the variances ra randomly generated. So then you, using these variances, you produce noise. Right? So you produce noise uh, with the Gaussian distribution with standard deviation determined by the variances. Right? Uh, then you produce the table of true temperature, one copy for each of the sensors. This is just for plotting reasons, uh, a single copy of the temperature. And then you form readings that are true values, which is Ts plus Tn is the noise, right? So uh, if we do that, we can now see, uh, for example, uh, two sensors. I chose 25th and the first. Let's see. So you can see uh, these variances are up about the same. So maybe I can choose, for example, the third sensor uh, because it has smaller variance. And let's see what it looks like. There it is. So you see the blue sensor has smaller variance, and the red sensor obviously has larger variance. So the, these readings are obtained by simply adding the noise to the true readings with the variance uh, given by uh, these uh, uh, randomly produced tables. You can play with this and see how it performs for other values. Uh, OK, so first we will form maximum likelihood estimation because we know the variances of each sensor. So the weights, so these guys, these are the weights, right, will be chosen in an optimal way. So here we get our maximum likelihood weights. Then we produce estimate, right? You see here the reading of the height sensor is weighted, it has a weight uh, that is uh, uh, produced by this maximum likelihood uh, formula, right? So you get the estimates, and then we can compute the root square mean error of the, um, of the estimator, right? So this would be essentially an estimation of the standard deviation 
of the estimator because we take square root and you can see it's 0 0.3 uh, approximately. Uh, let's see what is the error of the best uh, estimator. This will be one with the smallest variance and you can see it is one point something. So that's what I've been telling you. Um, uh, the maximum likelihood estimation, if you knew the variances, uh, beats uh, the um, it has much smaller variance uh, than the variance of the more, most precise uh, sensor, one with the smallest uh, variance. Uh, and we didn't throw out any of the readings, right? Okay, so here is now the um, iterative filtering algorithm. So we start with initial estimation, which is just the mean of all the readings. Right? Uh, and we want to see how many rounds of iteration uh, it will be until they stabilize to the accuracy of 10 to the minus 8. <coughs> right? So um, this is the initial uh, estimation. And so now what do we do recursively? Uh, for as long as the difference between the past uh, reading, past two consecutive readings, uh, it was uh, larger than the prescribed accuracy, you iterate. So uh, you store a uh, previous estimation in this old estimate, right? So then what do you do? You compute the variance with previously obtained estimation as the true value, right? And here I left it with tt minus 1. It doesn't make a big difference, uh, right? Then you produce weights uh, that, are si that simulate maximum likelihood. But here, the variances are not the true variances, but those obtained in the previous round of iteration, right? And then you recompute new estimate. Uh, so if we do that, uh, Right, it, uh, it finished the computation. Uh, and lo and behold, we want to see what is the counter, what is the estimate, and what is the error. So uh, let's display it here. Uh, and let's see how many rounds of iteration. So you see counter is to 10, right? So it took 10 rounds of this iteration until the two consecutive uh, uh, readings stabilized to a uh, difference less than 10 to the minus 8. And look at the variances obtained. So the gold standard uh, maximum likelihood estimation is 0 0.3 that you cannot beat. The best sensor has variance one point uh, a little bit larger than 1. And the iterative filtering algorithm, without knowing the variances, uh, it found that uh, uh, it had variance of 0 0.39, so just a tiny little bit worse than the, uh, than the maximum likelihood. Now, this now, the, what it plots, uh, is the following. What it plots is uh, red R, the true variant, the, the weights that correspond to true variances, right? And blue are the weights iteratively found by this algorithm. And you can see that it picked not only the true value, but it produced also very uh, accurate uh, uh, estimation of the variances of the sensors, uh, right? So are you with me? Do you understand how this algorithm works? It's extremely useful thing for aggregation of inconsistent information, right? When you have uh, multiple sources of information and you want to aggregate. And today, this is the mantra, you know, in big data. Big data is useless if it remains big. You have to compress it. Yes? Um, what's like the benefit of this? Are we using something like cross-correlation? Like uh, uh, the benefit is uh, 
to answer your question, you will see it uh, in a minute. Uh, uh, because uh, unlike standard statistical methods that should uh, work well with uh, in the presence of stochastic noise, we want our algorithm to work well when the noise is not at all stochastic. But it's deterministic, namely when it's a collusion attack. Right? Because, uh, say, um, uh, say uh, traders uh, want to skew the uh, trading of a particular stock so they can, in a collusion, report uh, either unrealistic low estimate or realistic high estimate, right? And you want to reject this. Uh, so this is the value. The algorithm has to have two somewhat kind of incompatible uh, features. It has to perform near optimal in stochastic case. So it should be on a par with the best statistical methods, right? On the other hand, when the error is not stochastic, it should also reject that, right? Yes? Alex, like for the estimate one, uh, on the numerator, did you miss one over? Uh, in the estimate, uh, uh, this one? Yeah. Uh, on the numerator, did you miss one over? Yeah. But there is already, so this is, oh, yeah, 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 sorry, 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 thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, what did they do? So it's, uh, thank you very much. Uh, so it's one over some of the reciprocals. Uh, okay, so um, one could say, well, gee, that uh, behaves uh, uh, pretty well, so, um, let's see how well it performs, uh, uh, and then we will see um, in the presence of attacks. So let us see um, um, the second case. So the, in the first case, all the sensors, uh, uh, the variances were chosen uh, uniformly, randomly between 1 and 5. In the second case, uh, by the way, when you run Mathematica, before you run, uh, when you finish an experiment, you change something and you want to rerun it, kill the kernel, because Mathematica's kernel, it's also kind of, it's extremely kind of complex thing, and it tends to get corrupted uh, pretty easily, so you clear the kernel before any run. Okay, case two. Case two, we take variances to be monotonically increasing. You see it's uh, i over 5 uh, when i goes from 1 to n. So if we do it uh, uh, this way, right, let's see what the variances will look like. Okay. So here you can see they step uh, from 0 0.2 all the way to uh, 5 in a uniform way. And the rest remains the same. So let's run it and see how, uh, how it will behave. Now look at this. With this setup of variances, uh, the error that our algorithm did uh, is actually equal to the error of the best sensor. And that's bad, right? It's just picking, uh, it, you know, it's exactly contrary to the mantra of maximum likelihood. Why is this so? Uh, you see, this is a well-known problem of iterative procedures, uh, namely the presence of attractors. What is that? You see, the problem is uh, that these weights uh, have poles uh, at zero. So if in the, during the iteration you get anywhere close to the readings of one of the sensors, its estimation of the variance will be very small, so the denominator 
uh, so the fraction will be extremely large and when you normalize it, this sensor will get something close to one and everyone else close to zero, right? So uh, this is well known problem when you're searching for a uh, local uh, minima, you might have like sinkholes uh, well, that look something like that. Uh, the, uh, the, if the surface, so uh, if the surface when you are searching looks like this, uh, uh, this is what you are looking, but you have these attractors, and if you happen to be here, you can end up uh, in the uh, in the uh, lo uh, local minima, right? Uh, because this guy has a pole at zero, and thus, if you if during the iteration, as the estimator gets close to reading of one of the sensors, uh, it will slam just into. Uh, this will be very small, this will be very large, and uh, it will converge just to the readings of that sensor. So, this is no good. So, what happened then um, is uh, um, people try to resolve this in different uh, ways. Uh, so, in another <coughs> paper, um, Um, let's see. So in another paper, uh, by the way, all this code is on the web, um, and uh, you can play with this, uh, and I'll tell you later what you can do. Um, that might be really a very interesting uh, project uh, for you. Um, Full screen. Okay, so to help this problem, um, maybe I should show. Okay, to explain, uh, let me. I was uh, maybe I should first show you something else so that you understand why we are dealing with this. Uh, so. Let us just do, to answer your question, uh, why people like this algorithm. Well, it performs well in the presence of collusion. So sometimes it can produce bad kind of answers, but, and maybe I should have first shown you uh, this, uh, uh, this simulation. So what happens here? Here, um, you have, uh, 20 sensors that are accurate. And your adversary managed to hijack five of the sensors and wants to send data to skew your readings. Um, and now you might wonder who on earth would do such a thing. Is this really a problem? But it turns out it is, you see, because for example, electric grids have uh, current sensors uh, and many other kind of uh, uh, that, uh, um, uh, that uh, help uh, reroute uh, uh, electricity through different uh, high voltage uh, lines. And Americans are paranoid that maybe Russians, right, who else, would hijack uh, uh, a few sensors on the grid send uh, ridiculous readings uh, and the system would, uh, uh, you know, make a wrong estimate of the loads and it would crash the system, right? In fact, uh, uh, what happened, uh, people do that uh, um, by tampering with the reporting of sensors and uh, uh, I, no one knows exactly who, but the suspects are uh, Americans and uh, Israelis that they actually tampered with the readings of the sensors of the centrifuges of Iranians uh, 
uh, uranium uh, uh, or uranium enrichment uh, plants and uh, caused uh, a breakdown, uh, caused the centrifuges to spin out of control. So these are serious, uh, actually serious problems. Uh, uh, people worry about robust evaluation in the presence of noise. So now, um, what happens here? So assume you have 20 good guys, Americans, the Yanks, right? And you have five Russians, hmm? okay? So good guys, the Yanks, they report uh, uh, true readings, maybe with some variance, uh, which is again here. It's uh, I put it between one and fifteen to make it more interesting. Uh, uh, but the last five, the Russian sensors, they do the following uh, thing: uh, the noise, uh, uh, the, the readings. Uh, that the uh, honest sensor produced are just the real temperature plus the noise. But the last five sensors, right, when n is larger than n, n minus 5, they report some huge value, in this case, 100. So you can see on the plot, the uh, red line is uh, our old curve, right, um, the true values. Blue are the readings of an honest but somewhat no noisy sensor, and the red line is the reading of the attackers, right? And lo and behold, let's see how the um, algorithm performs. Uh, just for your information, there are several uh, iterative filtering algorithms here that we are going to go through, but uh, um, oops, what did I do? Um, but uh, let's pay attention only to the first one and see how it will perform um, uh, in in this uh, setup. So just to um, so there are here, there are several outputs, but you can see here, the first error is maximum, the variance of maximum likelihood estimation. This is the best but honest sensor. And this is error of the reciprocal of our estimator. And notice, it is almost in the presence of attack. If they